Good morning guys, bank holiday again. I'm just uh, hanging about waiting for the guys to come on the training course this morning. So I just thought I'd uh, give you another little post after the uh, positive feedback we got back yesterday. I'll, uh, I'll keep going until you get fed up. Um, on technical helplines, we've been coming across questions about the difference between a flu sensor and a flu fuse. Well, these two devices look identical, but they're a million miles apart. This one is a fuse and this one is a sensor. And the only way that I can determine the difference without testing with my multimeter is by when they're actually ordered and come into stock. I ask the guys to put a, a black felt tip mark on so we can tell the difference when we send out to stockists. But basically this, this device here is a sensor. How do I know it's a sensor? Because if I follow the wire down from this sensor, and it comes down, 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 down. If it goes into the printed circuit board on any boiler, then it's a sensor. And a sensor is probably the best option because when a sensor goes to overheat, then it will attempt to try three times. So it'll fail, try again, fail, try again, fail, try again, and then go to a, a manufacturer's failure code. And this flu sensor is as it sounds, it's there to sense over temperature on the flu. So if there's a problem with, you know, overeating or a, a bad combustion issue or a, a flu problem, then that's when that device will kick in. So just to give you an idea, a flu sensor, as it's stood in, in, in my hand as such, at room temperature, this will read around 10K. And, and I've no reason to think that that's any different across, you know, uh, other, other types of boilers. So 10K on that sensor. Now, then we come on to a flu fuse. Now, on an old atmospheric appliance, this device is a flu fuse. And how can I tell, how can you tell when you're on site that it's a flu fuse or a sensor? Well, dead simple. If you follow the wire down, and if it piggybacks across, I'll just go get, if it piggybacks across the low water pressure cutoff switch, so basically you've got a, a, a wire on the common and piggyback and breaking across the, the the common and normally open so follow the wire down from the flu fuse if it piggybacks across there then it's a fuse now if it's a fuse and it blows then if it blows it blows it's you as an engineer that needs to go repair it and what you usually find the failure code for that will be a low water pressure problem because it is it isn't a low water pressure problem but just remember it does piggyback across the low water pressure cutoff switch okay so arguably the best option would be a sensor but be careful guys because there's there's both out there okay now just back across to this this pre-mix appliance what we've got here sorry Becky I'll let you get in there what we've got here we've got the low water pressure cutoff switch here and here we've got the if you like the flow switch or the pump proving switch or the differential switch it links back around the return now this works like an old Giannone type diverter valve. You've got the, 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 the diaphragm, then you've got the micro switch. Now, this links through the low water pressure cutoff switch. So basically, if the pump's not running, then the pump proving switch will not energize, consequently the boiler won't fire, okay? But let's say the pump is running, but you're showing a low water pressure, on this boiler it's 28 code, you're showing low water pressure. Then it could be here, or it could be here. Now, as you can see, this wire's in sequence, so you can't actually link this out, okay? So what, what, what I tend to do, guys, I'll check continuity across the low water pressure cutoff switch first, okay, to make sure that that's okay. And nine times out of 10, it's not the low water pressure cutoff switch that's faulty, it's the level of debris that's, that's sealed off the pipe. It's a dirty system, it just needs cleansing and cleaning or a power flush. But, if it proves to be okay on the low water pressure cutoff switch, I can test for continuity across this switch when it's energizing, but basically the easiest way, what I find, I just unclip the switch and I get a small screwdriver so it's still wired in sequence. I switch the boiler on, okay? And as soon as the pump energizes, the second that pump energizes, I get my small screwdriver and I make the switch, okay? So if I make the switch and the boiler fires, that's, that's telling me that the switch is fine and I've got a problem with the plunger like you'd have with an old type diverter valve. So basically guys, it's not rocket science, it's just step by step. 
Um, I hope I hope what I'm saying is helpful to you. And as I say, the 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 the, the amount of posts that are coming back through, I probably won't have time to answer any questions. But by all means, come and see us on a training day at some point. Thanks a lot. Have a good bank holiday.